Hey everyone, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're gonna show how to do both tapping in the SMX control, as well as how to cut threads using thread milling. I get a lot of questions a lot of times about thread milling. It's much easier than most people think it is, but the most important part is understanding the tooling for this. So if you look at the tool that's in the spindle right now, you'll notice that I have my tapping tool in there, and it has a floating tapping head in it, which is required in order to cut threads with a tap because there's no encoder on the spindle. And without that, it doesn't know exactly when it reverses its direction from down to up or forward to reverse. And because of that case, the float, what it does, it allows it to compress as it starts to thread. And then if it doesn't have a perfect union when it changes direction, it'll allow it to expand as it comes back up out of the hole. So the one thing you wanna keep in mind is when you're using a tap, make sure that you leave a higher Z rapid so there's room that if the tool is trailing behind that it can snap back to the neutral position before it goes to the next hole. Now if you look at the part that I have in here, I'm just gonna to go to program mode and push look. And in here you'll see what I've already done. So I've cut the outside of the part, putting a radius on the corners. I've uh, cut a circle out of the middle, which we're gonna thread in a minute. And then I've drilled all the holes so I got that part out. That'll help us keep the video a little short and, uh, and not lose your attention in the middle of it, okay? So what I'm going to do is if I look actually in here and I go to the program itself and just go to the end, if I back up a little bit, you're gonna see where my thread milling is. And I wanna talk about this first, even though I'm gonna do it last. So in my thread milling, it's in the center. I have my Z rapid here and that's what I was talking about first. So my Z rapid here can be a hundred thousands above the part because I'm not gonna use the tapping head, right? And then I'm going to start at Z zero and then I'm going to go one inch deep so I make sure I get all the way through my part. My part's only three quarters of an inch thick. All right, I'm gonna cut in clockwise direction because I'm doing standard threads. And then the pitch of the thread is an eight pitch thread, which means one divided by eight is one eighth, right? So that's the point 125. My major diameter is gonna end up being three and an eighth because it's a three inch hole right now, which is my minor diameter. I'm doing inside threads. My angle can start anywhere in the degree wheel, but we're just gonna put it at zero, which means it basically starts at three o'clock. And that number of passes, I'm gonna use three passes with a 5,000th finish cut. My RPM's at 1500 and I'm using uh, tool number five, I believe it is, okay? Now, if I back up a little bit, you're gonna see in here that I have four tapping events in here. And the thing I wanna point out with tapping is that my Z rapid is at a quarter inch. That's to make up for the float in the tapping head, okay? I'm gonna do all the tapping at 300 and if I go all the way back to here, you're gonna see that my first tapping event is event number 11. All the rest of the work is done. So we're gonna start right there. I've got my tapping tool in here, so let's get started, right? So I'm gonna hit the mode key, I'm gonna to go to run. I'm gonna say I wanna start at event 11, okay? And it says when you're ready, push go. So I'm gonna push go. And here I am in the home position. It's telling me to make sure I got the right tool in there and turn the spindle on, okay? So I'm gonna do that. I'm a little short today, I guess. Okay, so it's on and like always, I like to use tracking just to make sure it's in the right place. But remember this, if I use tracking, there's a point that it has to take over in order to cut the thread at the right pitch. So I'm gonna track the first one and then I'll let it do the rest by itself. I always like to start a little bit above the top of the part to just make sure that my numbers look good and they do, and then let it work. Once it finishes, it goes back to forward and now it's still in tracking. So I'm gonna hit stop, CNC run, and go. 